There is a spacecraft that is flying closer to the sun than any other human-made object ever. This spacecraft is breaking speed and distance records, flying through the sun's scorching atmosphere, and collecting amazing data and images of our star and its surroundings. More importantly, it is using the gravity of Venus to change its orbit and get closer to the sun. It's called the Parker Solar Probe, and it's NASA's groundbreaking mission to touch the sun and explore its effects on the solar system. This probe is about to make its sixth flyby of Venus on August 21st, 2023, which will help it get closer and faster to the sun. In this video, we will discuss how the probe uses gravity assist from planets to reach its desired orbit, how and why it uses Venus flybys to change its orbit, and what are some of the achievements and records that it has set so far in its mission. Before we dive in, we need to understand what is gravity assist and how it helps us reach places we never thought it was possible to reach. Gravity assist is a technique that involves flying close to a planet and using its gravity to change the speed and direction of a spacecraft. This way, the spacecraft can save fuel and time by using the planet's orbital energy. This technique is not new. It has been used by many spacecraft in history. For example, NASA's Voyager 1 and 2 used gravity assist from Jupiter and Saturn to reach the outer solar system and beyond. Another example is NASA's Cassini, which used gravity assist from Venus, Earth and Jupiter to reach Saturn and its moons. Also, NASA's New Horizons used gravity assist from Jupiter to reach Pluto and the Kuiper Belt. Gravity assist is a clever way of using planetary motion to explore the solar system. But how does gravity assist work exactly? Well, imagine you are playing a game of pool. You want to hit a ball into a pocket, but there is another ball in your way. What do you do? You can use the other ball as a bumper, hitting it at an angle so that it deflects your ball towards the pocket. That's basically what gravity assist does but with planets instead of balls. When a spacecraft flies by a planet, it feels a gravitational pull from the planet that changes its speed and direction. Depending on the angle of approach, the spacecraft can either gain or lose speed relative to the sun. If the spacecraft flies behind the planet in its orbit around the sun, it gains speed because it gets a boost from the planet's orbital motion. If the spacecraft flies in front of the planet in its orbit around the sun, it loses speed because it gets slowed down by the planet's orbital motion. The spacecraft can also change its orbital inclination by flying above or below the planet's equator. The higher the inclination, the more tilted the orbit is relative to the sun's equator. This technique is a powerful tool that can help us reach places that would otherwise be too difficult or expensive to reach with conventional rockets. With it, we can explore more of our solar system and beyond with less fuel and time. It also allows us to study different aspects of planetary science, such as atmospheres, magnetospheres, geology, and climate. Now that you know what gravity assist is and how it works, let me tell you how the Parker Solar Probe uses it to get closer and faster to the Sun. The probe uses Venus as its gravity assist partner, flying by the planet seven times during its mission. Each time the probe gets closer to the sun and faster in its orbit. The next Venus flyby is on August 21st, 2023. But why Venus? Why not another planet? Well, Venus is the best option for the probe's mission. Venus is closer to the sun than Earth, so it can help the probe reduce its orbit more effectively. The probe needs to reduce its orbit from 150 days at launch to 88 days at its closest approach. It also needs to reduce its orbit's tilt from 7 degrees to 3 degrees. This way, the probe can study the sun's poles more easily. But how does flying by Venus help the probe do that? Well, look at this animation that shows how the probe uses Venus flybys to change its orbit around the sun. As you can see, the probe starts with a wide and elliptical orbit that takes it far from the sun and close to Earth. Then, it flies by Venus for the first time, which changes its orbit to a smaller and more circular one that takes it closer to the Sun and farther from Earth. Then it flies by Venus again, which changes its orbit to an even smaller and more elliptical one that takes it even closer to the Sun and even farther from Earth. And so on, until the probe reaches its final orbit that takes it as close as 6 million kilometers from the Sun's surface. Isn't that amazing? By using Venus flybys, the probe can change its orbit without using much fuel. 
The probe can also use its thrusters, solar panels, and heat shield to control its orbit and protect itself from Venus's and the Sun's heat, radiation, and dust. The probe can also use its instruments to study Venus's atmosphere and magnetic field, which can tell us more about the planet's evolution and climate. The Parker Solar Probe is an amazing spacecraft that has done incredible things in its journey to the Sun. Let me tell you some of the records and achievements that it has set so far. First of all, it is the fastest human-made object ever, reaching speeds of over 330,000 kilometers per hour. That's faster than a bullet. Can you imagine how fast that is? Second, it is the closest human-made object to the Sun ever, getting as close as 6.2 million kilometers from the Sun's surface. That's closer than any other spacecraft has ever been. How close is that? Well, it's about 16 times closer than Earth. Third, it is the first spacecraft to fly through the sun's corona, or outer atmosphere, which is millions of degrees hotter than the sun's surface. How hot is that? Well, it's so hot that even metals can melt. But that's not all. The probe has also collected amazing data and images of the sun and its surroundings, which can help us understand how the sun works and how it affects our planet and other worlds. For example, it has seen switchbacks in the solar wind, which are sudden changes in the direction of the magnetic field carried by the solar wind. These switchbacks are caused by something happening near the sun's surface, where magnetic field lines break and reconnect in different ways. These switchbacks can change how energy and momentum are transferred from the sun to the solar wind. Another thing that the probe has also found is a dust-free zone around the sun, which means that dust particles are vaporized by the intense heat near the sun. This dust-free zone starts from about 7 million kilometers to about 3 million kilometers from the sun's surface. This zone was predicted by scientists in 1929, but never confirmed until now. The dust-free zone can affect how light is scattered and polarized by the sun and its corona. It has also traced the origin of the slow solar wind, which is a stream of plasma that flows from the sun at lower speeds than the fast solar wind. The slow solar wind has been a mystery for a long time, as we did not know where it came from or how it was formed. The probe has found out that the slow solar wind comes from small holes in the sun's corona, which are places where the magnetic field lines are open and let plasma escape. The slow solar wind can affect how the sun's magnetic field interacts with the Earth's magnetic field, which can cause geomagnetic storms. The probe still has more to do in its mission. It will keep flying by Venus and getting closer to the sun until 2025, when it will be as close as 6 million kilometers from the sun's surface. That's about four times closer than Mercury. It will also try to measure some of the most mysterious things in solar physics, such as the solar flares and coronal mass ejections that can cause space weather events on Earth. Space weather events are changes in the Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere caused by the sun's activity. They can affect our communication systems, power grids, satellites, and astronauts. By understanding how the sun makes these events, we can better predict and protect ourselves from them. Thank you for watching this video and learning more about this amazing spacecraft. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to share them with me. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions. See you next time.